Hello and welcome back to Wild Thistle Kitchen. My name is Anita and today I'm going to take you along on a typical Sunday in my kitchen where I just try to get a jump start on the week with some ingredient prep, not really meal prep, but just a few ingredients that I know we will use throughout the week that it really helps, it just helps save time and just makes meal time a lot more streamlined and convenient throughout the week, having a few things prepared already at the beginning of the week. So the first thing I'm making here is some keto bread. Now, I am sure you, if you've been watching, you've noticed we are not really keto, um, but my husband, he does like to eat a lower carb diet. It just makes him feel better. So I try sometimes to make him these, um, store-bought items that are very expensive uh, and it, also if you've been following along you know that we're in the middle of the three rivers pantry challenge and we have not been grocery shopping in about a month and a half so sometimes we do like to get this it's called base culture keto bread my husband really likes it toasted like with eggs in the morning and it is very pricey, so I'm happy to try to make it from scratch, and this is the first time that I'm trying it. So that is what I'm making here, and I'll link the recipe I'm following below. It is not my recipe, and this is the first time. And right here, you'll see, I got, I think, three double yokers in this while I was making this recipe, which, I don't know, I just always think it's kind of special to get those, so I was happy to be able to show that here. <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I'm not going to say every ingredient I'm adding here. I will link the recipe below, but it's typical kind of keto ingredients, you know, um, higher fat, lower carb, high fiber ingredients. There's some butter going into the eggs. It was egg whites and whole eggs. I'm adding some vinegar. And then that dry mixture I made was just a combination of kind of alternative flowers and some psyllium husk fiber, which I just happened to have, which is kind of a weird ingredient, but it's just because sometimes I do try to make keto recipes for Jason, and that is a higher fiber ingredient that is included in some keto recipes. So yeah, it's kind of like putting together a quick bread. It's not like making a you know, like a yeast, like a kneaded bread. It's one that you just mix up in a bowl. And then some boiling water goes on right at the end. And that's the batter. It was really easy to make. And, you know, thankfully I did have kind of these more unique alternative flowers and ingredients already. Most of them I got from Azure Standard and they were just waiting in the pantry for this pantry challenge moment. And there it is all done. It actually turned out really good. It's a very short loaf, so it's not, it wouldn't be great for like a sandwich, I guess, um, but it turned out nice. And then here, something else I like to do on Sundays or really any day, if I haven't done it already, is to pull out some frozen meats and just stick them in the fridge. I try to do a variety, so like some beef, some pork, some chicken, so that we're not eating the same thing every night. So I'm grabbing a chuck roast because I just have kind of been craving like a slow cooked chuck roast. And I am gonna get some ground chicken, some pork sausage, and these burgers, sometimes I'll grab those, but those thaw so fast in water. I'll just put them in some cool water in the sink and they thaw really quickly. So I don't usually pull the burgers out, but we do have burgers about once a week. And then these, this is like my little seafood drawer down here. The fish thaws really quickly and so does shrimp, but these shrimp have been like on my mind during this pantry challenge because they have been in the freezer for kind of a while, so I want to use those up. And then I'm grabbing this smoked salmon because I was thinking my husband could have that on some of his toasted keto bread. Very fancy. Um, I will link that salmon below too. It's such a good smoked salmon. I actually worked with that company once and I have continued to buy their products ever since. Not sponsored. 
um, and then next thing up I almost always make some kind of a bread or a baked good on Sundays I just enjoy the routine and kind of the ritual of it and this is my French bread recipe I do have this principal recipe on my blog I will link that below mix two loaves of really nice soft French bread and then while I'm making it you know I notice when things are getting empty and I just take the opportunity while you know the yeast is blooming or the bread is rising to kind of you know refill the sugar container or refill the flour which I'll do here in a minute um, I just really like to take advantage of time in the kitchen like that it's like a little race against the clock or a little I don't know, it's like a little challenge I have with myself to see, okay, what can I get done while the yeast is blooming? So here I'm adding in some flour to that bloomed yeast mixture. And like I said, I'll link this French bread recipe below. It's so good. I make it all the time. I've been making it for years and years. It's definitely a favorite in our family. It's, and it's, it is really quite easy to make if, if you're a baker. And then, yeah, here I'm just refilling the flour because I noticed it was getting low, especially after making this bread. It makes two nice big loaves. And of course, you could have the recipe if you didn't want to make two, but I just think if you're going to make one loaf of bread, you might as well make two and either, you know, you can always put one in the freezer. And there it is all done. So now I'll just cover it and let it rise for about an hour. It depends on the time of year, but this time of year when it's a little cooler, it takes about an hour. And then I'm using those um, yolks left over from the keto bread to later on, I'll use those for my egg wash. So, you know, using every little bit, especially during this pantry challenge, but I always dislike wasting anything in the kitchen. So the pantry challenge just further enhances that <laughs> and then here's my nice french bread dough i just divide it in half and i'm not a a scales baker so you know you could weigh this and divide it perfectly in half i just kind of feel it and sometimes one loaf is a little different than the other and that doesn't bother me one bit but i just take each loaf and shape it and i'll show you that process here Thank you. 
Now, after both of the loaves are shaped, I place them on a parchment-lined baking sheet, cover them with a towel, and let them rise for 30 to 45 minutes. They won't quite double, but they will definitely increase in volume. And then I just give them an egg wash. The oven is preheated to 375, by the way. I egg wash them and then give them a slash. You can do one straight down the middle. I like these little sort of diagonal slashes, but it's totally a matter of preference. It doesn't really matter as long as you slash it somewhere so the loaves don't explode in the oven. And then here they are, all browned and beautiful. It's such a good, reliable bread recipe. And again, I will link it down below and you can go to my blog and get the printable recipe. And this always looks a little bit different. My ingredient or meal prep, if you want to call it that, on a Sunday. It's never the same things. It's usually a bread, but then everything else kind of varies. And today I'm making, just batch cooking a lot of bacon because bacon is one of those things like I really don't enjoy cooking it because it's messy. It makes the whole house smell like bacon, which sometimes... I don't know, it's just not one of my favorite things. So, but it is nice to have bacon for recipes. My husband really likes bacon. So if I'm gonna cook it, I kinda like to cook a lot of it at one time and stash it away in the free in the fridge. And you know, sometimes I kinda have to hide it because bacon disappears quickly around here. But so I am doing two big trays of it in the oven. I cook it at 375 for like 20, 25 minutes. It just depends on the thickness. This is a thicker one, so it'll take a little longer. And that's it. It's just a really simple thing to do, but it makes a big difference during the week to already have this done. And of course, I always save my baking grease, but first when I take it out of the oven, I like to prop it up kind of diagonally. This is something that I learned from my dad. He always did this. Um, and it just helps the grease kind of drain away while the bacon cools and crisps up. And then I remove the bacon and pour that grease off. I, I've been saving it, especially lately during this pantry challenge. I've been trying to use things like bacon fat more for cooking than my precious butter, which I do love to cook with, but you know, I'm trying to make it last. So the bacon grease has been really really ha handy and I've been glad to have it but yeah there's all that bacon put away and I'm just gonna hide that in the back of the fridge and hope nobody notices it and something else that we love having for snacks or for lazy breakfasts are hard-boiled eggs so I love to make a big batch and thankfully our chickens are really laying right now we didn't have a very cold winter and the light is you know, the days are getting longer again now and our chickens have really picked up. So we are taking advantage of that and I'm making a big batch of hard boiled eggs that we'll just eat, you know, throughout the week. And the last thing I'm making is some homemade mayonnaise. I have been making homemade mayonnaise for probably 10 years and it used to be this like kind of fancy like oh my gosh somebody's making homemade mayonnaise and now it's just such a normal part of our lives that I can't imagine not having homemade mayonnaise um, and I love that I know exactly what's going into it and I make a batch every couple of weeks and here I am using avocado oil some of you may have heard me say I don't really love the flavor of it in mayonnaise and I don't but I'm just using it up and I add some vinegar or lemon juice and it kind of helps. And I also add uh, Dijon mustard to kind of mask that avocado oil flavor. But I just love having homemade mayonnaise in the fridge. So I like to make it if we're out, especially on a Sunday. And that's it for this ingredient prep Sunday. Um, here is that beautiful French bread again that I'll link below. I am going to show you some of it sliced here in a second. It's just... Like I said, I've made it for a very long time, um, a decade more, I think, actually. And it's just a really, really delicious bread. And then this is that keto bread. I, I let it cool and sliced into it. 
It's really good. It's very dense, but toasted up. It's it's good. My husband really likes it. And I guess that's all that matters because I made it for him. And I will link that recipe down below too. We are still going strong in the Three Rivers Pantry Challenge. It's been about a month and a half since we have gotten any groceries. And we're doing fine. It's kind of fun. It's been a fun little adventure. Um, the kids, of course, are kind of griping about it, but they'll be all right. And um, I would love to know if you are participating in it and how it's going for you. If you missed it, I've shared a couple previous videos of some meals and some snacks. And then before those two, I shared our pantry, fridge, and freezer tour of everything we had in the whole house before we started. So check those videos out and thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.